We got a lot of ground to cover today. We're going to look at three main different topics. One of them will be really quick, and I think we may have covered it in class, but I wanted to have it on the recording here. So that is uh, workflow, keeping our workflow organized. Okay. The second thing is we're going to take just a minute to look at some HTML stuff. Like every day, I want to make sure we touch on HTML, but we're going to look at some new things that were added to recent versions of HTML that make your markup a little bit better. And then we're going to look at some design stuff. Now, you'll recall I say this all the time, I'm not a designer, right? I'm not a very good designer. Um, I can take your design and I can build it. No matter what your design is, I can build it, right? So far, right? Challenge accepted, right? <laughs> so far, that's been the case in my career. But coming up with design, not my strong suit. However, there are some basic things that we can do to help improve the overall look and feel of our website. So I'm going to give you a few resources to help you be inspired and give you some ideas, right? And some cool little effects you can do with CSS that are very simple and very powerful. Starting with workflow. Every time I'm going to write, build a website, I have a folder here that is called web template. And I think I did show you guys this the other day, but again, I want to have it recorded. Bless you. So right here I have web template. I'm going to drag a copy of that onto my desktop. Fun little tip there, if you grab a window and you shake it on a Windows machine, it'll minimize every other window that's open. Okay, drag that over, copy it, and now I'm going to rename it to whatever we're doing today, which is, we'll just call this miscellaneous. But if this were a client's website or something, I would rename it to whatever their website is or whatever the project is, Pizza 1, Pizza 2, whatever. Okay. Inside of there, what do I have? I have my CSS, my image, my JavaScript, and in my, my index file, I have it's already built here. And now this thing right here, this meta tag, we're going to learn what that's all about next time we meet. All right? So for now, I'm going to delete it. But I do have that in there ready to go so I don't have to worry about it. I also automatically have a style sheet linked up right here. And I also have JavaScript linked up. And that, that is a live JavaScript file, but we haven't learned JavaScript yet, so we're going to delete that. But that stuff would be there when I'm building a project. Okay? And then we're just going to call this miscellaneous. So now I've given it a title, and if I open this up, you can quickly see that I have this gray background here. So what does that tell me? That tells me my CSS is working, that it's connected up, right? Because in my CSS, I said, hey, give me a great background, right? Even though you guys didn't know that, that's obviously I did some styling, right? So here we go. I also reset everything, and that's just set already done in my CSS. And then I have this background here. So we're going to talk about these images here and how we get those in a minute. Um, for now, I'm going to change it to a different one, which is yellow, I think, is another file I have. Let's see. Nope. Let me take a look at my image folder, see what I called it. Uh, BG yellow. Okay. BG yellow. I'll show you later where we can get those files and where we can get these little tile images you can use. There. So I'm going to stick with that yellow one for now. It's fine. So that's just a quick little tip for you to keep your projects organized, right? Just have a folder that's a default template that's got everything set up. And along the way, when you realize, oh, it'd be nice if all of my projects had this other thing set up, we'll go edit your template and then just copy and paste it, right? Super easy way to stay current with all your stuff. Now, for your five-minute websites, mm -hmm. do not do that, right? <laughs> okay, five-minute websites, I want you to hand code them because I want to make sure you really do understand them, all right? But that aside, you're good. Okay, so moving on. The next thing is I'm going to show you a little idea that somebody had a long time ago. And so if you've built a web page, which you guys have built several at this point, and maybe you have a section where you call it uh, like nav, like this is your nav section, right? And inside of here, you have maybe your UL and your LIs, right? Whatever. And you have some navigation right there. I'm not going to write the full navigation. Now. But you guys have done that, right? Something like that. Maybe your class was called something else, but you did that. Maybe you have a section that's called main, like you called the class main. And we have, we have actually done that in class. And maybe you've got your main content in there. Maybe you have another one that's sort of like a section or something like that. And maybe you have another one that's maybe like an aside, okay, where you have just some aside content. Maybe at the top of all this, 
you have like a div and you put a class called header, right? And the nav is inside the header or something like that. And maybe at the bottom of the site, when all is said and done, you have div class equals footer or something like that, right? And you have all your code in there. So for example, here's a real live website, uh, magic reviewed. So this white navigation bar at the top here is maybe the class is called header, right? And inside of it is there's the ULs, that are the LIs in the UL. There's a search bar. There's my, my image logo or whatever. And maybe this section here, right here is the main section. Maybe down here is like another different section, right? Maybe this part over here is like uh, an aside or something like that. And you'll find that's a very common terminology or vernacular for web for blocks. They use the sides and, and sections and things like that, okay? So turns out when people had this idea to call their header header and their footer footer and their main section main as a class, it wasn't original. Tons of web developers have done that. They just because it seems natural, right? This is the main section, I'm gonna call the class main. Well, Google ran a web crawl, which they do all the time anyway, through the entire internet, searching for patterns. And they found that pretty much everybody used a class called header. I mean, not everybody literally, but you know, 90% of the websites out there have a class called header. They have one called footer, they had one called nav, they had one called main. Like everybody just had the same naming convention. And there are even a point where Oh, look, I spelled class wrong. Does not catch me? <laughs> there even came a point where you, you know, maybe HTML tutorials online, people would suggest that you use that naming convention. Well, because it was so popular and so common, where, uh, Google and whoever was involved in this search, they kind of got with the powers that be, the people that manage the HTML language, and they decided to come up with new tags, right? So instead of having to bother with calling your tag class equals header, they just made a tag called header. And now you can just use that instead, okay? And they made a tag called nav. And they made a tag that's called main. It's not a class, it's just another tag. Just like a paragraph tag or an anchor tag or whatever, it's just another tag. Section, right? And maybe you have two or three sections and then you have an aside, a side, and then you have a footer, right? So now, look at your site here. It's very well structured, right? Without the classes even, it's very well structured. This idea, we call this, if you're, the more accurate your tags describe the content, we call that semantic markup. Your markup is semantic. It's accurately, clearly describing the content. The goal, the one and only goal of HTML is to describe content. That's it. Describe content. That's all it does. This is describing that this is navigation. This is describing that this is the header stuff. This is describing that the content within those tags is footer content like, you know, maybe something like this down here, footer content. This is saying that this is a section. This is a section of the site. This is a section. This is a little bit of an aside, maybe less important than a section, but it's still there. This is the main stuff, okay? So there's a whole bunch of semantic tags that were added. I believe most of these were added at, in HTML5 when that became a thing. So the idea is we want to do this. There are main, three main pieces to front end web development. HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript, which we get to in a few weeks, right? HTML's job, describe content, period. That's it. CSS's job, lay out content. Make it look pretty, right? JavaScript's job, make it functional. Make it interactive. It's programming. It's actual programming. HTML and CSS isn't really programming. JavaScript is real programming, okay? So big picture, we feel okay about that? Yeah, so moving forward, we're gonna, you're gonna see more of these tags here moving forward. We'll start switching to this. 
Divs are still a thing. They're not going away. They're still useful, and it's not wrong to use a div with a different class name. And by the way, you know, you can still put a class on here, right? Class equals ducks or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. All right? You can still do that. But now, if I just have header, I can target all the headers in my CSS. Just header, uh, curly braces, and put my CSS. Okay? All right. So when it comes to development, and if you've got a background in something like Java or some other language, you'll, you may have heard this idea where you want to keep style separate from actual code, right? You kind of separate things into different layers. You have the, the in this case for HTML, it's just simply the content, right? That's it. Content is one thing, HTML. Then layout, the way it looks and feels, is this a different thing. You keep those separate. You don't, this is why I'm not a fan of inline styling or embedded styling. I want to keep my style separate. Keep my content over here, my style over here, and keep my program uh, functionality and programming stuff even in a third place. Okay? All right. So, enough of that. Let's take a look at um, some new CSS stuff. And the next few things here I'm going to show you, let's make a little list here. We're going to talk about sort of under the category of design-ish. We're going to look at Flexbox. We're going to look at, we'll just go with BG Images, and we're going to, a resource for that. We're going to look at custom fonts, and we're going to look at color choices, okay? And then we're going to look at some uh, fancy effects, we'll call it, okay? Fancy effects. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm going to clear out all this stuff here. And just for the sake of not making things more confusing, with we're going to just stick with divs for this, this example for now until we get, our, get more familiar with those other ones. So I'm going to make a div here that's called outer. And inside of it, it's going to have class equals inner. No content in them. And then my style, let's go with div.outer do something to you in a minute and div dot enter okay let's give these guys a width of 200 pixels and a height 200 pixels border two pixels solid red or re and outer will give a border two pixels solid blue all right let's take a look and let's go ahead and put some content in there just like we did the other day. Does this look familiar? We did something similar to this the other day, right? Okay, here we go. As you can see, we've got our red boxes exactly how we expect them to look. I'm gonna turn off that yellow background. It's gonna make it hard to see. So let's get rid of you for now. Okay, so red background, our red boxes, and then the blue boxes. And we learned how to float them to the left, right? And how to float them to the right, and how to do some, lots of different things with them, right? Let me just quickly increase that font size. 75 pixels and font family to Homa. Text line center. Okay. There we go. A little bit of padding just to center it and then we'll move on. 10 pixels. 40. Close enough. Question number one. Slow down. Breathe. Just wrote a lot of code there. Everything I did there, and you don't have to answer this out loud, but how do you feel? You should be like, oh yeah, I totally followed that. I know exactly what he's doing there. Um, all those properties you've seen before, the structure, the syntax, and all that, you should be familiar with that. So the intent here is that everything I just did you're totally with me, okay? My intent wasn't to teach you any of that. You should already know that at this point. It was just to throw it there so we can have a little bit of stuff to see visually. Okay. So if I want to line those up, I can use float. If I wanted to center them, I can. we know how to center them, like the whole thing, right? I can center the whole thing. But what if I want to center the, I want to float them. Let's start there. Float left. float them, but I want that whole thing to be centered. 
what can we do? We could try this, right? Text align center. Do you see why that might work? Right? I'm putting text align center on the blue div, the outer div, whatever color that was, and hoping that the divs inside will act as text and center over. But when I refresh, it didn't work. It's no good. Why doesn't it work? What was that? Uh, in the, well, I was putting text align on the blue, which should center any content that's within it, right? But these divs, they're being floated, they're display block, and they're just, it gets messy, right? So you could, a possible solution is something like display these guys in line block. And now they actually will center, okay? But we lose some of the things that we like about the float, right? And some of those things we like about the float we haven't even covered yet, okay? But there are things that we like about the float that we can't do if I've got them display inline block. So this is not the best solution, but it does work, okay? So there's ways you can play around with this. Well, we're going to try something totally different here. Get rid of this. And we're back to this setup. Now, I'm going to change the display of the outer div. Currently, it's display block. That's the default. We could do inline, we could do inline block, or we can do flex. Display flex. That's the first new value. That, that's the first new thing we've learned today, right there. Now, it, it's like floating them. Okay? It looks like it's floating them. We can now use a property that we could not use before. Okay? So remember when we used uh, position? Because we're using position, that opens up top, bottom, right, left. Well, if we didn't use position, those don't work. Same thing with display flex. If you're not using display flex, you cannot use justify content. You cannot use that. But since we are display flex, we can use it. And we're going to say center. And hello, centered. Now, I'm going to put some margin around these guys. There we go. But that's not all you can do with this. Okay? Flexbox is very powerful, and we're not going to cover everything today. There's no way. Okay? So, that being the case, let me show you a couple resources that you have available right now that you can look at later, not in class, obviously. Okay? But if you go into today's lecture, so click on my uh, course schedule, look at today's date, right here, the 26th, which means we're right here, semantics and getting fancy. And I lied. Don't go there. Go to the modules. Okay. Go to the modules and go to module two resources right here. And right here, fancy resources, all right? Transition we're going to talk about later today. Then Flexbox 1 and 2, those are two Flexbox resources. Check those out, okay? Later, not right now. All right. So let's get back to this. The Flex is a, the, the whole concept of what exactly it is. Don't worry too much about it, but the big thing is it's a way to make layout better. It's way better. Way better than just plain old divs. So why do we even care about float? Do we need float anymore? I would still use it if I was trying to put a picture inside of a paragraph or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly right. So what Jake said was that you using the float if you want to put a picture inside of a paragraph. You've seen this in newspaper articles or something, in an actual physical paper newspaper where you have an image and the text kind of wraps around the image. That's what the float was originally meant to do. We started getting crazy with the divs to make it do layout stuff, and that's why Flexbox became a thing a few years back, and now it's, it's as far as I know, every browser supports it. It wasn't until a few years ago that it, that was true, though, and so I only added Flexbox to the curriculum just a couple years ago because it still wasn't supported well enough for me to do it, but now it's pretty much everywhere. So let's look at what we can do with this. With just this one thing, I turned it into Flex. With this property here, I was able to center it, but I can also move everything to where the flex begins or where the flex starts. And where the flex starts? On the left. Okay. Where does it end? On the right. Just doing that, notice it didn't reverse the order of A, B, C, D. It just moves it over. All right. Now, the default way that flex works is it goes horizontally. But you can change it to be flex direction 
columns or vertical. I can't remember the, the keyword. I think it's columns. Right now, the flex direction is row. You can make it flex direction column. In fact, let's just do that. Flex direction. I believe that is the, the property we want. Yeah, and it makes it now flexing this way. Okay, we're going to leave the default. All right, now let's look at some big picture things we can do. Let's just get rid of that completely here. Save this, and we're back to here. Now I'm going to go back to centering it, or instead of centering it, we're going to use a, pro a value called space between. And a little note here, guys. Uh, I'm not. Th this is not me saying here is the most awesome lecture on every little detail about Flexbox. This is me saying here, look at a couple cool things you can do with it. Go dig and do some more research. This is one of those kind of things that there's no way we're going to cover it all in class. Okay, so make sure, go do some digging for sure. But the space between property, this is really cool. It's one of my favorites. It evenly distributes the boxes across its parents. Okay? When we said, hey, outer, you are a flex display now, then what that means is every child of outer is now what we call a flex item. It's a flex item. And those flex items just behave a certain way because their parent is a flex. You can have flex, I can make each of my items also flex box so that their children also flex. You can have nested flexing, all kinds of stuff. So, but these things, they're, they're items. The inners are the, uh, the flex items. So we can actually align items. Stand by. We're going to put a height on that blue border first of like 600 pixels. Like that. And now I can say align items center and vertical centering okay try doing that with regular divs without flexbox it's that's the thing i told you that there have been like dissertations and theses is written on that okay theses whatever that there's been tons of different things written on this idea how to vertically center well with flexbox it's one line of code it's easy okay there's also another thing here that you can do, and again, this is me just throwing some spaghetti against the wall and open some sticks, right? We can do space around, which will distribute around the boxes, including the edges there, right? So now it's, however much space is left, it's divided up evenly to have this much here on the left, right here, space there, that same amount of space right here on the right, and then that same amount of space to the left of the B, and so on down the line, right? Get the idea, okay? All right, how do we feel about space around, space between? Next thing we can look at is for align items, I can align them to the flex start, which again is, that's the top, or the flex end, which is the bottom. Also, check this out. Here's a weird little thing here, but let's just put some text in here. Refresh that, and I'm going to take off the restriction of the height of the inner for just a moment. Okay, and I'm also going to take the restriction off the height of the outer so that everything will push, right? So that is pushing the, the box, right? It's growing as it needs to, okay? Now, I want to point something out here. When you guys try this, you're going to get that weird thing where the the border, the blue border was collapsed at the top. You remember that from the other day? The reason I'm not having that problem is because I turned my overflow to hidden. But if that overflow hidden is not on, sometimes when you're dealing with a lot of div designing, you can get some weird issues. So if you run into some weird issue, like why did mine not work but Jeff's did, it's probably because of your overflow, okay? All right, so the problem that I don't like about this is now this text is squished, or stretched down, but A, B, and C is not. So take a look at this site, for example. This is a very common thing. Let me shrink it up here so we can see. Where it's very common where you'd want to have like the main content of the site here. And then right next to it, you want to have this sort of maybe a navigation thing here. Well, if you can't make these the same height, you end up with some weird looking thing where the navigate where the main content is pushing down all the way, right? Because that's how big the content is. But because the content's really small, it just it stops right there, and this would be all gray down here. 
that's a very common problem that you can have if you don't build this correctly. Well, the way you can fix that is using Flexbox is one way. Okay, and we're going to try to fix that right now. So looking here, save this. Looking here, I want A, C, and D to be the same size as this guy right here. Well, easy. There is just a, a line items, stretch. And there you go. They're all the same size. Okay? And they will stay the same size, no matter what the content is. They will line up to be as big as whatever the biggest one is. Okay? So, in other words, if I take this content out of here, they just go back to however big they need for B. Okay? So, questions so far? You guys are so quiet. I told you my theory about when you're quiet, what that means when I ask if you have questions. It means either you know the material so well that you have no questions because I'm so amazing at explaining it. Right? <laughs> That's thing one. Or thing two, I'm so horrible at explaining it that you're so confused you don't even know what to ask. So, I'm going to hope it's the first one, not the second one. Okay? So, yeah. Yay, we got a question. Okay, so what happens if you resize the screen right now, like your browser screen? Very good. That's the next thing we're going to look at. Good question. So he's asking, what happens when I resize the browser? Okay, let me show you. Let me change the size of these just a little bit here. Let's go like 500 pixels here. And let's refresh that. And I want that height back. Whoa. And make sure we're at regular size. That's that's right there is normal size, what this would look like. Uh, I've scaled it down because it was kind of huge, but this is normal size, how big this would be. Now check this out. If I resize, look how it's squishing everything in, right? Seems to be good. Good. Everything keeps resizing. Great. Seems like ideally, ideally what we want, right? Except for that's way too skinny. That's no good. We don't like that. Okay? Now, maybe you want to make your content shrink to be that little teeny teeny and fit in those little narrow skinny things there. But I'm not, I'm not about that, right? I want to make this look nicer. So, there's a property that you can apply to the parent, that the one that is Display Flex, called Flex Wrap. And the default is no wrap. I believe it's hyphenated no dash wrap. But you can set it to wrap. And now, as you resize, in fact, let's, let's make this a little bit smaller here, like 300. So 300 fits on there just fine. So they start resizing, when 300 gets a little squishy, because those boxes are trying to stay at 300, they wrap. And then they wrap again. And then they wrap again. Okay? Now, on the next time we meet, we're going to talk about making your websites what we call responsive, right? And so I'm going to briefly show you what that is and what it isn't, and then we'll see how this can be useful for that. So quickly here, let's go to a page like uh, the Magic, I think it's just called Magic Warehouse. Yeah. This is not a site I built. This is just a magic company out there. They sell magic tricks and stuff. And this site is definitely in need of update. But when I resize it, so far so good, then all of a sudden... So far, not so good. That's a problem, right? If I'm on a mobile device, I gotta scroll sideways to look at that. I gotta pinch and zoom. No way, that's no good, okay? Now, as I've told you, I'm not a master designer, folks. However, my site is responsive, okay? Here's what it looks like in this width right here. Let's look at a couple things. This header section has my logo in it. It has the navigation. It has the search bar. It has the ads that people pay uh, to be positioned there. In this case, it's just me asking for donations to fund the site, right? Don't donate to my site, guys, okay? I'm not trying to pitch you, okay? But that's what that banner is for, and this is a banner that, you know, maybe somebody would pay to be on that spot. So watch all this stuff here. As I resize, everything's shrinking, whereas notice the difference here when I resize. Things don't shrink. Nothing's shrinking. You see that? Okay? On this side, things are shrinking. 
And why, in just a moment, those banners on the left and right are going to disappear. And also this section right here, this whole thing is going to disappear. Okay? It's going to move. The banners are going to vanish, but the, the right-hand side will move right about now. Okay? So now if I scroll down, banners are gone, but those things that were on the right are now here. Okay? If I keep going, and notice that this looks different, right? The logo went to the top, the search thing got down here, and this changed here, okay? Keep going. Notice things keep resizing. They don't go off the screen. They don't get truncated. Notice what happened when I got here. My logo started feeling a little too big, so it shrank. Keep going and look at my menu change. My, my logo went away because we're getting to a smaller device here, and the logo's taking up too much real estate. So now when I look at my menu, it's a drop-down menu like this. Keep shrinking and watch these guys down here. Watch this set of little thingies down here. As I resize, they start to wrap. And guess what I'm using down there? Flexbox, right? And then they wrap, and they're wrapping nicely. And then I keep going, and they, if, I don't think it's going to go to 1 because the, the browser won't get that small. But I have tested it where I can make the browser get smaller, and it will go to 1. Okay, so it looks, this is, again, not the best layout in the world, but this looks mobile friendly. Notice I don't have any side scrolling. Okay, so this is a responsive website. It looks good on pretty much all devices. And by good, I don't mean it looks good design. It just, it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't get truncated. It doesn't break or whatever, right? Okay. So does the browser, like, Yeah, and you, so the question was, how, how do you know when to shrink everything? And so what we're going to learn about next time is what's called media queries. And so inside of your CSS, you can write a media query, which basically is code that says, and this is not real code, but it's going to be when the browser is this big, use this CSS, right? And when it's this big, use that CSS and so on down the line, right? So it's Yeah, so if you want, so what you, you do, there's, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of different schools of thought on responsive design, which we're going to spend more time, again, this is not meant to cover all that now, but yeah, there's different ways to do it. You can say anytime it's on this specific dimensions, then I want the site to look exactly like this, or you can just say, yeah, just start squishing and resizing stuff, or you can start off by making the mobile site first, and then as it grows, make things change as it grows. There's lots of different ways to do it. But the technique is we use media queries, which we learn about in a couple days. Okay? But Flexbox helps with that a little bit. With Flexbox, I don't need any media queries to get that to work. It just does by itself. Okay? All right, let's look at a couple other things that help us with our design. Right? Thing number one, that background image I had on here. You can save background, oh sorry, body or HTML, whatever, pick one, background, image, and then you use this syntax, and you put a URL to an image there, okay? Well, the one that I had was the, it was called BG Yellow. You need to put here the file path to that, right? So what's the file path? Well, it's, let me show you what it looks like. Think about this for just a minute. Go here. Here is the index file, right? In here, it says, hey, I have a style sheet. It is in from where I, the index file, am, which is this folder right here. Look for something called CSS, which there it is. There's CSS right there, and it's saying to look for that folder right there. And then inside of CSS, you shall find this file, style.css. And sure enough, there it is, right? So we open that up. Now, from here... I'm saying, go find this background image. Well, it's not in the CSS folder. It's not in the main folder. It's in the image folder. So I have to tell the file path to get out of the CSS folder, go up one directory, then go down into the image directory. Right? The way you do that is with the dot dot. Dot dot means go back one folder, okay? So from the CSS folder, go back one. That's that right there. If I do that, that takes me from CSS 
It's like clicking that back arrow. Takes me to here. Now that I'm here, go into image. Now that you're in image, look for something called bgyellow.png. And that should be applying the yellow background. Okay? Where do I get the yellow background? Right, that's the question. There's a really cool website called subtlepatterns.com, and they've renamed it to something else, to a top tall or top, this right here. But it's subtlepatterns.com. If you go there, it'll redirect you to here. And looking here, it has all these little patterns here. Like here's one that's sort of like little dots. Um, but that is subtle. What is that? It looks like nothing. Okay, when I, but this looks like a cork board. That's kind of cool. This looks like some sort of weird mesh looking thing. Looks like little trees. These are subtle patterns, and there's lots of them, so let's click on page 40 here. This looks like like uh, wood paneling or something. This nice gray one, I kind of like that. So what you can do is click on it, preview, and it applies it to the site, so you can see what it might look like. You can also search, like maybe I want something that's blue. So it'll bring up all the blue patterns, right? And here's the fun one here. So how do I get it? Well, click on the download link next to the one you want. Download. It downloads a zip file to your desktop or to wherever your downloads go. I put mine on my desktop. If you unzip it, and if you don't know how to do that, that's, you'll have to Google that later, right? But you should know at this point in your career. Okay, extract all, extract it. And inside of the folder that I just unzipped, you'll see the actual file right here. It's called weather. So I'm going to put that inside of my image folder in my project. Now I have this one called weather. And if I go to my code and I just change this to weather, and I refresh my browser, where are you? Now I'm applying that, okay? So just finding little patterns like that can make a big difference to what your site looks like. So using Flexbox can make your site a little bit more flexible, pardon the pun, and look nicer. And then now using maybe a background image from this, like a subtle one. You don't want some crazy big, you know, in your face one. Something subtle is nice, okay? Also, we can customize our fonts a little bit, right? So I'm going to put a quick navigation menu on here. Top. And we'll do li anchor goes here. And just say link. All right, here we go. Let's see what that looks like. All right, let's make it look like a menu at least, right? So let's test how much you remember about that. I want a horizontal menu. Oh, yeah, Ricky, sorry. I said a question about the top top right. Is that like a resource? It is, yeah. If you go into Module 2 Resources, you'll see a thing that says Subtle Patterns, and you can click on that. It'll take you there. Yep. I think it's also in today's lecture notes as well, but it's definitely in the resources. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's go to make this into a menu. How, what's the first step we want to do when we're going to turn our navigation into a horizontal menu? Yeah. Uh, inline block on the UL. Yep, inline block on the UL. Uh, not quite. Where? Keep going. Oh, wait. Inline. So, body? Oh, sorry. I thought well, you threw your voice over there. Uh, not on the body. On the LI. On the LI. Right? And what else? One other place we put the inline block. On the anchor tags, right? This one line right here, display inli inline block. Put that every time you want to make a horizontal menu. That's your starting point. That's, your, that's the first thing you do if you're making a horizontal menu. Okay? All right. Now, then the second thing you do is apply everything you want to do with your menu is right in there, okay? We're not gonna do anything fancy, just a quick thing here. We're gonna put a width on these things of like 100 pixels and a height of 100 and a, uh, let's do a padding of 20 pixels and a margin of five and font size of like 75. Let's not put a width on them. 
There we go. Okay. Put a border on them real quick because we're going to need that in a few minutes anyway. Border. Actually, we do back, ground, color ever. Give me color. Red. Nice. Okay. And why is my padding? We're going to just change the height here. Do not force it. There we go. Okay. Good enough. So let's oh, get rid of that text decoration. All right, and we'll make the font color. I mean, should give me color. I did. I said, Manisha, give me a color. <laughs> Green. All right, nice. That's a little hard to see, but that's all right. We might change it. So the real point is I want to focus on the fonts. Let's just go with white here. I think that'll look pretty good on the red. There we go. If you go to google.fonts.com, and which is also in the resources section, and nope, that's not what I wanted, uh, fonts.google.com. I don't know what I said, but fonts.google.com. That's what I meant right there. Okay. So look at this, and you can see a whole bunch of different fonts, and there are tons of them on here. And every day there's new ones, and they change which ones are on the front page. But scroll through and find one you kind of like. Okay? This is kind of cool. A red flare silhouetted the jagged edge of a wing. Right? This. Uh, so I, I saw one right at the top that I actually like. I, I like this one. It looks like it was handwritten. So the way you can get your hands on that font is you click this little plus button right here and it adds it down here, okay? If you click on this, it tells you everything to do. There's a couple different ways you can do it. One way to do it is just put this link right here in your HTML. All right, so HTML, link it, and now you're just linking to another style sheet, okay? You're linking to another style sheet. It's on the Google server, but it's, it's another style sheet. Then, now that you're linking to that style sheet, you need to still be able to call it in your CSS. And you call it right here, font family is called Mansalva. So if I change my font family, which I haven't made yet, right there. What this means is if Mansalva is not available for some reason, then use just cursive the default cursive font for that browser, whatever browser it may be. But now if I refresh, bam, I got that custom font, okay? Now, also note that if I want to use more than one font, let's just minimize this here, and let's say we also like, where's that bold one I saw a minute ago? This one right here, okay? Click that. It adds it to your group down below. You'll notice now there are two families down there. Recopy your style, your, your link right here. Just recopy it and replace the one you already did. Now, I'm going to put it below just for a minute so you can see the difference between the two. Notice here, it's exactly the same thing all the way up to right, so it's identical right to there, right? And this little and display equals swap business is also there. The only thing that was added was this pipe symbol, notable, that's it because that's the other font we just added. If I added a third font, there'd be another pipe with another font, okay? Now notice your validator, your W3 validator, will give you an error with that pipe. That will not validate. If you get that error, I will not count it against you, okay? If you do it this way. But there's a way around this even, okay? But this, if you have more than one font and you have that pipe there, you'll get a, a validation error. I don't know if that's because Google, Google's wrong, or if the validator's not updated. I'm not sure which one's the, the case. The other way to do it, though, however, instead of using the standard technique, by the way, let's get this font family notable here. Whoa. And we're going to apply that to our inner dudes right here. Place to Homa. And we get... Did I miss something? Oh, I didn't save my index file. By the way, we don't need this now, as I pointed out. Okay. 
There we go. Now we got that font on ABCD, okay? Now, the other way to do this, instead of using this link here, go back here, and there's a little thing that says import. Click on that, and you can put this line here in your style sheet. Now, notice it has style tags wrapped around it. That's if you're going to put it actually in your HTML file, right? You need the style tag. Remember this? But if you're going to put it directly in your CSS, just do that. And so now what I can do, in my, get rid of this line here, and in my CSS, the very top, just import that. So I'm importing the, the font there. All that line does, it's just literally taking whatever's inside of that, that style sheet that's on Google server, it's grabbing all that code and it's copying and pasting it right into your CSS. So in other words, if you yourself on your own server had two or three style sheets for one website, you could import them into each other and just it's the same as if they were all in one style sheet, okay? But this will also work, going back here, refreshing, and it should stay the same, okay? Good? All right. So we're looking at some ideas to help improve our layout, our style. Flexbox helps with our overall structure. Subtle Patterns helps with maybe looking a little nicer, a little cleaner. Custom Fonts makes it a little bit more unique, okay? What about color? Choosing color. So as we saw a minute ago, and this is nobody's fault, but we saw that we tried putting green. Where was that? Up, 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 right there. We tried putting green or freen, whatever on there, and that's, that's hard to see. This is the kind of thing that I will comment on in your, your homework assignments, that if it looks like that, that's, that's bad on the eyes. That actually hurts my eyes a little bit to look at that, and I've got pretty good vision. Um, that hurts my eyes to look at that, um, and it's just not as clear and clean as the white was. Now, white's not the only color that'll work, like um, maybe, I don't know, let's try yellow. I have no idea if that's gonna work. But wow, that looks really good, actually, I think. That looks very good, and I don't know if that's a good, combination, but as far as visibility, it looks great. Now, maybe those colors should not be together. That's a different story, but visibility, that's important. You don't want things like this, like you have uh, black for the color, and then let's go, where is the other one at? Um, inner, where's the other color? Oh, the background color, um, gray or something like that, right? Well, that actually, looks good. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Yeah, it's, but you get the idea. Like red, uh, that might look okay too. I don't know, red and orange. That black and gray looks pretty good though. I like that. Yeah, but you see the idea. Play around. We we we're trying to avoid stuff like that. Okay, uh, this is more proof that I'm not a, a designer, right? Okay. Anyway, but you get the idea. Play around with different colors and make sure that they look okay. All right. I was going for a dark gray. And I got a light gray. That's what happened. Now. How do we know what's a good color, what's not? Okay, give me um, something to search for on Google uh, that you can guess the image popping up would be pretty colorful. Flower. Flower. All right, yeah, like, uh, let's do this one right here. Um, actually, let's do the sunflower here, or whatever that, that looks like a sunflower. So I'm gonna take this image and save the image to my desktop. Actually, gonna put it in my miscellaneous, actually right into here. I'll we'll call that flower. Okay. Now maybe my website's gonna be about flowers, and this is gonna be like the main image. Okay. Maybe that's my logo. I don't know. Well, if you go to, and this is linked in the resource section to the Adobe co uh, cooler right there, it showed up. It's the Adobe Color Wheel. If you watched my video on color, you know about this color wheel, okay? Oh, they changed it again, man. Every time I come here, it's different. So I gotta find the thing I'm looking for now. There used to be a place where you can upload an image. Oh, right there, extract from an image. It's still there. They, they keep changing it on me. Go watch my video on this, on, on colors. It's like about 30 or 40 minutes but it talks about different ways to apply color and how to use color in CSS. But here, what the idea of this website is to create a color palette, right? So you can click on triad and this will show the, these positions here, this little tri-wheel on the color wheel. 
And in theory, and I don't know if this is right or wrong because I'm not a color guy, but theoretically, these colors work well together on a website. Now, obviously, if the font was this color and the background was that color, that's a problem. But what this could mean, if you needed to have something that were close shades that match whatever theme you're looking at, you could have maybe your H1's one purple and your H2 is a different purple or something like that, right? Maybe your background's this, this, this center ma uh, you know, beige color or whatever. Well, because we know our site's going to be the sunflower-looking thing, we can extract from an image. So select the image. And now it makes a color palette based on the colors in the flower. Now I can move things around. Maybe I want some more of these darker colors here. So I can move this guy right here. And now I'll get, that's just pure black. I don't think I wanted to go that dark, but like, you know, something like that, right? Like, I don't know, maybe there. And now I don't know what made it decide to put those points where it did. And that maybe they just know, hey, looking at this, we're picking up which ones we think are gonna work best together, okay? So now, I believe if you go back to the color wheel now, that palette is there and you can get a hold of the hex values right here. So if I wanna make the background color like this, uh, maybe we wanna make it this, and I don't know if this is gonna look good or not. Probably not, but let's just do it. So our HTML background color is that. And let's make our navigation background like this. And again, this might turn out to be hideous. I don't know. We'll see. And maybe the font color is this. Okay. Now, my claim is not that the color wheel can determine what colors look good on top of each other. But if they're spread out throughout the site, they supposedly look well, to look good together. Okay. So let's see how this turned out. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little bright, but the, the, they look okay, right? It depends on what you're doing, what the site's going to be. That background will be mostly covered up with your content, right? So anyway, the point is play around with the color wheel. Helps you come up with some design ideas and some decisions. So what are the tools we've looked at so far for as far as making our site look nicer? We've looked at Flexbox, background images, custom fonts, and color choices. This last part here is probably going to be your favorite part of the day. It's the coolest thing that we're gonna, we've learned up to this point for sure, okay? So let's clean up our page here. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff here. And I never closed my nav tag. I did that in the last class too, I forgot to close it. Yeah, okay. Or if I did, maybe I just accidentally deleted it. All right, and we can get rid of all this inner outer stuff. And let's see what we got so far. I definitely wanna change that background. Let's see if we can pick another color real quick that's like not as potent, like this one here maybe. This might be cool. Um, I mean, this, this the the You're asking how to use RGB? No, no, no. How if you use dark in the color? Because sometimes green is very dark, but if you do the light green on it, it fades in the same. Yeah, yeah, you can use RGB values to change the, the thing. But my uh, what I'm doing is trying to take Adobe's word for it that these colors work well together. So I'm just going to stick with them. But yeah, you can use RGBA values, RGB values, and uh, make it look better. All right, let's see how this turned out. Whew. I actually like that background, but it doesn't look well with those green things. Anyway, let's just go with white here. It's fine. All right, because the focus is going to be here. Let me center that, and then we're going to do some cool stuff here. Nav, UL, text, align. And we're going to put a margin top of about 35 pixels. I want to move it away from the top of the screen. And I want to put some margin left and right of about 20 pixels here. Let's just do 20 all around. There, okay. Not the best place for navigation, but it's a good place for the things we're about to do. Number one, let's create a hover effect, all right? When I hover over it, we want something to happen. We know how to do that, right? We just apply it to the thing that we want to change when we hover, which is the anchor tag. We do this. We did this the other day, okay? Let's just make the background color change from that green 
to let's just go a color that's not in there just to be hideous pink and I'm closing all this crap here stand by it's too much stuff open all right so now when I hover we get this pink thing right all right So we have this change to pink, right? It looks all right. But I don't like that it's so fast, right? It's so fast, it just flickers. You can slow it down. Go to the original property, the original tag that you're targeting, the original thing you're targeting, anchor, and there's this new property we're learning about called, that we're learning about today. It's been around for a while though, forever. Transition. I want to transition the background color by 500 milliseconds. So I want it to take 500 milliseconds to go from green to pink. And I'm going to change it to go to black so that white shows up better on it. Okay. So now watch when I hover over it. Ready? Subtle. You see how much difference that is? That's a huge difference. Right? If I turn this off, that's just not the same. Right? I think, if, I think we'd all agree but this is a much better effect. Smooth, nice. You go to my Magic Reviewed site. I'm actually using that right here at the top. See that? It's slowly appearing on there, okay? All right, so this is nice, nice effect. But you can transition anything. You can transition lots of things. Let's go with, I'm gonna change the font color. Let's start, we got black and white, so um, let's change the background to pink for just a minute of the site, and I want the font color white, and I want the background color black, and I'm going to change the color, the font. It's a good color that looks on black. It looks good on black. Red? I don't know about that. Okay, so now that's that's not doing the transition yet, but it, we, we are affecting that red there. I want to transition the color at 500 milliseconds. And now, nice, look at that, way better, okay? But why not do both, right? So let's make the color go to black, the background color go to white, so we're gonna have that reverse effect, right? Let's turn this off for a second. So it reverses, right? Put the transition back on. I want to transition color 500 milliseconds and background color 500 milliseconds. Notice the comma there. I think that comma is required, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, see that? Nice effect there, okay? Now you can, I mean, what if I start transitioning five or six properties? That can get a little unwieldy. Give me just a second, I'll get you. That can get a little unwieldy. So we're gonna do all. Everything that transition that, that, that changes will have a transit. See how that came in like that? Because it was changing, right? So now anything I do will have this transition effect. The idea of the transition is whenever you're changing from one state to another, slow it down based on the speed that we put there. So that's what I was going to ask. Uh, so when you just had transition for the background color, is it only for hover? It's any transition. Right? It's any time you transition state. So how does it know that you're targeting the hover transition, not like the clicking of a link? Transition? It's not that I'm targeting the hover transition. It's that a hover is a transition. So any transition with the background yes. would result up. Yes. Side. Yep. So the question, just to make sure it's caught on the recorder, where this transition is applied to any time the, this tag here, this target here, changes to something else. Anytime the color changes or anything like that. So if, for example, with responsive design, you resize your browser and the box shrinks a little bit, it'll shrink slowly. It'll transition. And so the, Jake's question was, well, how does this know to target this hover? And it's not targeting the hover. It's just because the hover is a transition, therefore, it's going to have a transition speed applied to it, right? You have a question, Jedi? Um, so is there a cap on how fast, um, well, how slow a transition can happen? 
I don't know if there's a cap, but I mean, I've you can do like you know, let's do how long is a minute? Three hundred uh, six thirty six hundred seconds. Three six hundred seconds. That's a full minute. That, what's that? That's that's thirty six hundred seconds is an hour. So, uh, an hour is, you're right. Th this is an hour? Yes. Okay, isn't that what I said? I wanted an hour? Yes. Okay. No, I, well, if, let's do a minute. I wanted an hour. I thought I said an hour. I don't know what I, I said. I thought I said an hour. Okay, whatever I said, I meant an hour. That's an hour, right? Okay. All right, man. Okay, it's going to take an hour for those links to appear where we want, right? Okay. Okay, that's going to lock up your browser. So, but let's do like, you know, 10 seconds, right? It's going to take 10 seconds for the links to appear there. And then when I hover, when that stops, it's going to take 10 seconds to transition from the current state, right? So I don't know if there's a limit. It's going to take 10 seconds to go back to the original once I unhover too. Do you know why it because it's an anchor link and all anchors are blue. The question was, why did it start out as blue? And so the, what, the tra transition from the default browser behavior to the color that I assigned to it right here, it transitioned from blue to white. So yeah. it goes from like every, any change you make into it through the CSS. Yes, okay. which why, is why doing all can be messy. It can be very resource intensive, okay? okay. So if we were to put transition all 10 seconds, Right at the very beginning of the CSS, we see it like begin to implement all of the CSS. Now, when you say at the beginning, what, like if I move this up here, well, no, it's like you take the transition, yeah, out and, you apply and put it, it here, yeah. yeah, then everything you do would have that transition. Don't do that, that's bad because <laughs> it'll lock up your browser, right? Especially if you do it for 10 seconds, it'll lie, everything will take forever, it'll annoy your users, it'll lock up their browser, it, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, but doing all for 500 milliseconds, notice the MS now, is relatively safe if you're just applying it to one thing. Apply it to the whole website, that's no good. You don't want to do that, okay? All right, so we're not done, though. It gets cooler. Let me just show you a couple other things we can maybe do, though. Let's go, like, start off with these being the anchor tags. We'll give them a border. Actually, we want to do down here. On the hover, change that. On the hover, we want to say border radius of 15 pixels. Now, when I hover, a little subtle effect there. See that? Okay. You can get crazier and make them turn round or something. Or you've probably seen, it's pretty common these days to have a round icon with a face in it, right? Like a picture of a face. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about? Everybody's giving me blank stares right now. <laughs> Never seen like a Facebook profile picture that's like the little icon that represents you, who you are? It's a little circle with your face in it? Yeah. You guys have never seen this? Okay, <laughs> okay. yeah, on Canvas we have it, yeah. <laughs> right here, see, right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's my face in a little circle. Okay, this is a common thing, man. That's, what? Did we go to another planet for a minute there? What the heck? Okay, so... Imagine having that circle with a picture in it, and then when you hover over it, it expands into a square so you can see the full picture, yeah. right? So it's a little thumbnail kind of a thing, right? You can do stuff like that. But wait, there's more. You can also do some movement. So I'm going to get rid of this border radius business, and here's a new property for you called transform. And there are three, there's lots of different values that transform can take, but I'm going to show you three of them. The first one we're going to look at is called rotate, right? And I can rotate it by a degrees, like seven degrees or something like that, okay? So if I hover now, it rotates by seven degrees, okay? By the way, I can rotate it 360 degrees. Less is more, people. Less is more, okay? <laughs> Also, we can, instead of rotating, we can skew, like, I don't know, 10 degrees. 
check it out. Okay. Now, when you skew, you can also do skew y, as in x and y plane, right? Or you can do skew x, which looks like just plain skew. I wonder if that's the default. But play around with that. There's another one here that's called scale. And this one, you scale it by a, a, rate, a fraction or a ratio. So I want it to be 1.5 times as big when I click hover over that. Okay. That, that's weird with the link there. I don't want the link to do that, but, but um, I want the box to do it. So we can play around with that, but you can get it to scale, right? You can also do, um, I think you can, yeah, you can do scale X, which will make it grow whichever way X is, that way. Okay, or you can just do scale Y. It grows that way, okay. Now, if we were doing this effect, we would want to reconsider where we're actually putting the scaling happening, because I don't want my anchor text to do that. So you want to consider where you're actually causing that to happen. Put it on the div, put it somewhere else. But you get the idea, right? How do we feel about that? You can do that to pictures, right? It's just Because you can apply hovers to anything. It doesn't have to be an anchor tag. You can apply these to anything. Notice this, this transform thing, this is not exclusive to a hover. I can just start, like let's say I want to start with it transform, and I want to start with it skewed by like seven degrees. So it starts looking like that. And then when I hover over it, maybe I do nothing. When I hover it, I don't do anything. Or I can say transform skew zero degrees and so now when I hover it straightens up it's up to you how you want to do it okay totally up to you now there's a, a little effect you can do here if we happen to have so let's get another box here I'm gonna kill my navigation for just a minute and we're gonna make div Class equals ball. So we have a div here, and we're going to apply a little bit of style to it. Let's just kill all this crap. Div that ball, and we'll do border radius of fifty percent. What is that going to do? It's going to make it round. Yep, and then we'll put a background color of blue and we'll make it width 200 pixels by height 200 pixels and we'll do font family Tahoma Tahoma color white and font size 50 pixels something like that okay and over here, we're going to put an A. Let's see what we got. All right, there's an A that we want to get that centered. Text align center. And put a little bit of padding on it. Top of 50 pixels. Close enough. All right, here we go. You ready? If I apply to div ball hover, and I'm going to transform, transform, rotate, 720, let's do 3600 degrees, and we'll put that transition on there. 500 milliseconds are all 500 milliseconds. When I hover over it, that seems a little fast, doesn't it? Let's change that to like five seconds. 
<laughs> that's, <not fun. laughs> that's annoying. Okay, but once it's there, you get this spinning effect. Now, why is that cool? Well, because when we learn about CSS animation, I can make the ball move across the screen. So it looks like it's rolling across the screen. Okay? But so there's lots of things we, when we get to animation, which is another day, that you can do. Okay? All right, folks, that's the time's up here. We got any questions about anything we covered?